Okay, thank you very much indeed. Now let's go to the story that they're calling Stop the Slab, S-L-A-B, the Slab. Why? What is the Slab? Well, we're going to find out right now. Residents and community groups in and around Waterloo are calling on the London Mayor to halt the development of a group of skyscrapers planned for the South Bank. Developers want to bulldoze ITV's former headquarters and replace it with office blocks, including one 26 storeys high. But some locals aren't happy with the plans and they claim the enormous structure will dominate the area, blighting views of the Thames from every angle. Our reporter Greg McKenzie joins us. Hello Greg, morning. Well good morning Vanessa. So I'm on the South Bank this morning, the former ITV building that's uh, earmarked to be bulldozed uh, but residents are angry about the potential overshadowing from the 25-storey skyscraper that's planned, or 26-storey. One resident describing it as disastrously ugly, mm. a disastrously ugly project. And with me are a number of residents. So let's uh, introduce yourselves, tell us who you are. Hi, I'm Hannah, um, I'm a local resident. I've lived here 35 years, and I grew up on the street that ITV was on, or is on. Hello, I'm Jarvla and I've lived here for seven years, but I've worked at the National Theatre since before it was built. And the National Theatre is next door, Vanessa. Yes. Hello, my name's Tom. I've lived in the area for 40 years, in fact. In fact, I'm part of the development that was a very famous campaign back in the 80s to put social housing here and mixed development instead of offices. And now we seem to be coming full circle, which is terrible news for us. So let me paint a picture for you, Vanessa, and for our listeners. So uh, councillors approved uh, the redevelopment of this uh, building next to the Grade 2 listed National Theatre and Conservation Area by a vote of 6 to 1 back on the 29th of March. It was Mitsubishi Estates, London and Core who have drawn up plans including restaurants, shops and a new gallery here. The tower block on 72 Upper Ground site would be replaced by a bulkier tower connected uh, by two more buildings. Now the, the anger point, if you like, or the real hotspot for residents is that there are no social housing in there there's going to be no new homes built here it's literally going to be uh, a, a, a workspace for people and uh, various other galleries and art spaces restaurants if you like now a Lambeth council spokesman said that these proposals are important for the South Bank site and have been approved by Lambeth Council's planning application committee on the basis that it's sustainable and that development would bring significant opportunities for people living in the borough. So hearing that, I mean, as residents, you're, you're not happy. And uh, I'm just thinking where we're we going to start first. Let's go to you first, uh, Hannah. Well, yes, so we're angry that there isn't housing. The previous uh, planning application on this site uh, did have housing as part of it. But I think it's more that... Uh, Lambeth Council and now it seems the GLA don't actually care about the local residents that actually live here. Um, you know, at the planning application, uh, Lambeth uh, councillors said that the impact to nearby uh, properties is regrettable, but because it's a central uh, location, the levels of lofts are acceptable. And that's talking about the daylight. And my friend here, um, the impact on daylight is huge. And there's 14 properties on this street alone, which are going to have really negative and, you know, severe impact to their daylight. In this cost of living crisis, that's unacceptable. And, and hearing that, uh, Derbla, but, you know, some will say, well, you live literally a stone's throw from the river. You've got a park down the end there. A tower block in front of your house what well, you live on the river well the fact is the tower block is going to be 235 percent bigger than the block that's there already we're not against development at all we expect development this is central london um, but what we do object to is the aesthetics of this the sheer bulk of this and for those of us who live directly opposite the fact that i personally and many others will lose 61 percent of my daylight into my flat so i'll be living in almost darkness if i lost that much from my eyesight, I'd be legally blind. Um, the only people who, the, the only uh, uh, councillors, uh, councillor who, who objected to this was the Green Council, all the others who passed it. Um, the fact is that this is, uh, you know, this is now a cultural mile on the South Bank. This is, this is a jewel in the crown of London, in the crown of the culture of the country. It's an international and national spot where we have more visitors here on the South Bank than go to any other part of London. And this huge monstrosity, which has no aesthetic value whatsoever, it's been designed merely to maximize the amount of offices that can be got in. It, 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 it's going to blight this 
side of the river. It will prohibit views. It will be the thing that isn't the most dominant visual thing on this side of the side bank, and it will overshadow the public spaces. It will overshadow the Queen's Walk. It will overshadow Burns Lane Gardens. Well, let's bring in Tom. I know you're, you're here as well, Tom. So in terms of you've lived here 40 years mm -hmm. and this area has been developed, it's being developed. And, and what do you want to say? Well, the thing is, when you live in this area so long, you see what it's changed from where there was nothing really here before. You couldn't walk along the river before. Now this is fabulous place to walk along. People from, it's not just locals. And it's worth stressing that we're not just talking about this as a local issue. People come from all over the world to this part of London. It's a fantastic area. The mayor has a responsibility to protect the views from Blackfriars Bridge, from Waterloo Bridge, famous views. Now, this slab, as it's been called in the press, this will overpower the buildings next to it. The, the listed buildings, the National Theatre, the IBM building, which is listed as well. So this isn't just a local issue. Would, would the French allow a building like this next to Notre Dame or the Eiffel Tower? I don't think so. We have contacted the mayor's office, Vanessa, and uh, they didn't get back to us yesterday for a comment. But in terms of the developers, they say that this will enhance the area with world-class offices and pledged more than a thousand jobs would could be created for local residents. But what's interesting, Vanessa, is the proposals were signed off on March the 29th by the council's planning committee, and then in May, the then uh, culture secretary, Michael Gove, intervened. So where we are now, the project, uh, the development is actually halted and residents are pleading now with the mayor to intervene to stop the development or at least redraft the proposals to at least include social housing and not make the structure so uh, what residents call ugly and kind of a stain on the area. So there's still some light at the end of this tunnel. It's not game over yet, is it? No, it's not game over yet, and we'll do all we can um, to, 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 to stop this monstrosity. Um, but the, the, the thing is that we feel powerless. We, we've already done all we can as residents. We went to the planning, uh, the, 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 the planning application meeting, but there was really hardly any point in our being there. We only got five minutes to speak whereas the developers had the, uh, you know, because, because they were presenting the development, they had control of the whole context, essentially. So we were, it, it, it was an, just an exercise our being there. It was a done, it appeared like a done deal beforehand. So you're not saying stop, you're just saying no. redraft the proposals? Not at all. And, and we've been saying that, saying that all along. With the consultation on this, and like, I wouldn't, I'm always frustrated by the consultation because th this happened uh, during the pandemic when people had other, you know, stresses going on. Every time that there seem to be key uh, decisions and milestones within uh, the planning application, it happens during the holiday time, Christmas uh, previously and uh, during the summer holidays. And, um, you know, at the moment, so many politicians are on holiday and we can't, you know, have the proper discussions and get, you know, the important sort of points across. So we're really grateful to be, you know, telling you about it and sharing this news. We've got a petition that, you know, in just in the last week alone has already increased, uh, you know, doubled in amount and we've got over 4,000 people, you know, from all over saying that uh, they don't want this. We were, um, we submitted that into Lambeth uh, prior to the planning application committee. We were about to, you know, submit it to the Mayor of London, but they made their decision not to get involved, uh, you know, just I think it was on a Monday. And we, we want to um, tell Greg Clark um, and okay. other people to sign that petition now. Right. Uh, thank you. Thank you everybody. Well, there you go, Vanessa. So that's just some of the residents here on the South Bank. Back to you in the studio. Thank you very much indeed. That was Greg McKenzie reporting. If you live around there, Southwark Street, you remember the old ITV building. If you object, or if you're in favour, in fact, of course, of the new development, let me know. 0800 731 2000. But now it's time on BBC Radio London's breakfast show for the news headlines, followed by the sport. <laughs> 